I'm Stella Webb. And I'm Siobhan Ghosh. I'm going to write my first fiction novel this year. And I'm going to film it. And we're going to release one video each week. And if you keep up with Stella's word count, by the end of 2017, you'll have... Apnar Boy A Bochor. Last week we talked about scene sequel scene, which is a way to structure your scenes and even your bigger chapters in a way that keeps your story moving. Today we're going to talk about motivation reaction units, which is a smaller structure you can use sentence by sentence or even a few sentences at a time. But before all that, we're two weeks into writing now, so how's it going with Cat Called, Stilla? It's going pretty well. I'm in chapter two, almost done with chapter two. I've hit just before my catalyst at this point. At home, we're supposed to have, what, 7,000 words by now? 7,000 words. Okay, so how many words do you have? 6,912. Alright, great. I've got a little bit further to go. A little bit of writing to do I'm close, today. I'm close, I'm really close. So, how many chapters in are you? Two. Okay, and you're almost to the catalyst? Really close. Okay. So remember, it's a race to get to the catalyst before your reader puts your book down. So you guys at home should be about to your catalyst by now. If not, kick it into gear. Have that person walking with a gun. So now let's go on to the, the topic of today, motivation reaction units. The phrase MRU was actually coined by What's His Nuts in his book Techniques of Selling Writer. It stands for Motivation Reaction Unit. And MRU can be really useful to you as a cog railway to kind of chug you through, to pull you through a scene. Especially action scenes, heavy dialogue scenes, yeah. sex scenes. The motivation is an external thing that happens to the character, and then the reaction is the character reacting to that motivation. Here's an example. This is from Randy Inger? Randy that's not, that's Inger Manson. Let's, let's not do that joke. A tiger dropped out of the tree and sprang towards Jack. That's an external motivation, a tiger jumping out of the tree. Now, how is Jack going to respond to that? Here's oh, the wrong way. Die, you bastard, Jack said. He jerked his rifle to his shoulder, finger finding the trigger. A burst of adrenaline shot through his veins. That's one way the scene could go, but there's something a little bit off in it, right? Yeah, that doesn't quite work somehow. Thing, things just seem to happen in a kind of a weird order. Think about this example. This is how Randy, Randy Ingermanson... Inger Manson. Oh. This is how Randy Ingermanson actually orders it. A tiger dropped out of the tree and sprang towards Jack. A burst of adrenaline shot through his veins. He jerked his rifle to his shoulder, finger finding the trigger. Die, you bastard, Jack yelled. Do you see how things were ordered differently there? The instinctual gut reaction happened first. The adrenaline happened first. Then he did a physical thing, putting the rifle to his shoulder. And at the very end, it was a mental thing, the choice of saying something. That's because psychologically and physiologically, the human body reacts a certain way to stimuli. Rational thought has to come after you have those emotional and those instinctive reactions. Look at what happens when we surprise Stilla. Hey, Kitty! Ah! Why do you do that? For the video. Not my finest moment. But very educational. Yeah. <laughs> so the point of the MRU is when something dramatic happens to the character, a big action scene, a big reveal, a big uh, a villain coming in, their reaction should happen in the same order. Instinctual, body level, then they decide to do something physical, then they can finally say something. If you do it in the other order, it just feels weird. Jim Butcher takes the MRU and he breaks down even further in terms of this is the order things should happen to your main character. If you read his blog post on sequels, you'll know that he actually applies this to his sequel scenes more often than not, but it can be applied to both sequel scenes and MRUs. It's a little different than the basic instinctual emotional reaction and then physical rational reaction, but it still works just as well and even breaks it down a little bit better. Yeah. And the cool thing about this is Jim Butcher shows how part of this MRU you focus on will help dictate what genre you're in. For example, if you're in a romance genre, you want to focus on this part of the RU and this part of the RU. If you're in a kind of science fiction detective novel, you want to focus on this. And if you're in an action novel, you want to focus on this. So let's see what that looks like. So, <clears throat> here's the motivation. I picked up the letter sitting on my desk. It was from Jack. Now, if you're writing a romance, you focus on the emotion part. So then, here's the next sentence. A wave of butterflies washed through me. From Jack? What could he want after all this time? Did this mean what I think? No, it couldn't be. Alright, so you can see the main character is having a lot of emotional reactions and anticipating what it could mean, which is great for the romance genre. But if you're writing in the detective or sci-fi genre, 
you want to stress a different part reason. That would look like this. I picked up the letter sitting on my desk. It was from Jack. The paper was folded neatly as if done by a practiced hand. So was Butler then, not the rough soldier I once knew. And with the mail schedules, it must have been sent two weeks ago to get here from the continent. So it was written before the news of his father's death then. I wondered if I could trust anything I read. So sci-fi detective stories, Jim Butcher says, focus on the reason portion of the MRU, the reason portion of the reaction. For horror, you want to focus on anticipation, which will look like this. I picked up the letter sitting on my desk. It was from Jack. It said, open me in huge, crazy, blood-red script scrawled all over the outside. It was heavy, like the weight of a gun, but smelled a little off, and it shifted slightly as I held it. My heart started pounding. Jack died one year ago today. All right, so do you see how that was all about the anticipation of what could be inside the letter? It's a little bit like romance, but not so much the emotion. It's just anticipating, scared of what's inside that letter. But if you're writing an action story, you know, like a, like a Die Hard or like a pulse-pounding movie, you focus on just choice which looks like this. I picked up the letter sitting on my desk. It was from Jack. It could only mean one thing. I picked up my gun and jacket from my desk and hailed the next cab downtown. So ask yourself, what kind of story are you writing? What genre are you writing? And as you're going through your scene, sequel scene, as motivations, external motivations happen to your character, focus on different parts of your character's reaction. In my Infinity Squad, I do a little bit on reason, but I do a lot of choice. Characters make decisions very quickly without having to think about them, and they move on, because it's a, it's a slam-bang action thing. For Cat Called, what are you focusing on? I would say emotion... Oh, it's more of an action story, so... Really? What did you think it was? Isn't it a romance? No, it's not a romance. Okay. It has a romantic subplot. It is not a romance. Oh, ro so they come out and their car is damaged, right? They go to a Halloween party, right. they, they come out and their car is all damaged. Take us through it. What happens? She has a visceral reaction, so she goes through emotion first. Okay. Then she starts trying to figure out what do we do from here, and then they have to make a choice about what they're going to do next. Okay. I don't spend a lot of time on anticipation. Yeah, because it's not a romance, it's, it's not really not a, a horror. It's not a horror. Okay. So again, you can tune these scene by scene. I have a scene in Infinity Squad 3, where they're going into a base and it's almost like a zombie type of thing that you know things shapes are slowly moving and everything's infected and horrible and I really amp up this. I spend a lot of time just lingering here. But I have other scenes where they're under artillery attack or they're under, you know, laser attack and it's all this. You know, maybe some of reason for the strategy, but it's all this. So you can tune this scene by scene, which is Jim Butcher's great addition to this discussion. When I first did Cat Called I wanted it to kind of have a horror overtone to it, so I was trying to do this. I can't write horror. I can't write romance or horror. I'm bad at it. What's funny that you guys didn't see is while we were sitting here trying to write those examples for you, the romance example came quickly, the detective example came quickly, the action example came quickly, but that one with the letter from Jack when he was dead, oh, horror? That, that took forever for us to write. Uh, again, figure out what kind of story you're writing, what kind of genre you're going in. Still has got a whole video about genres uh, she's going to coming up. Uh, so, figure out what genre you're writing in, and then use this to tune the scene. And read Jim Butcher's blog post. It's much better than What's His Nuts and Randy Inger. Randy Inger Manson. Uh, no. Your homework this week is while you're writing your 500 words a day, think about which of these you're going to highlight. Have an external motivation. Something big happens, and then your character reacts. And just do that consciously. Focus on this. Try writing an entire scene, especially like an action scene, with the motivation reaction unit. Next week, we're going to talk about one of the biggest misconceptions of writing advice, the show-don't-tell advice. Yeah, this Ooh. always causes a bunch of arguments between writers. Show-don't-tell. So until then, I'm Shabam Ghosh, and you've just been filled in. No, no, you may not still filled. <laughs> no, no, sorry, Phil. Goodbye from the Magic Tavern. Well, now you're just taking away from pocket. That just stop stealing. Stop stealing. <laughs> and now you know the rest of the story. So until then, get writing. Don't, Don't say it. Damn it. <laughs>
It's not jaunty. It's the opposite of jaunty. All right, come Straight blood. Stop! No! No, I don't. No! It's gotta be neat! It's gotta be neat! It's gotta be no. a jaunty angle! No. Yeah, okay, here we go. Okay, jaunty angle. Alright, everyone's cool. Everyone's cool. Alright. Cool. Okay, no! I said no! It's gotta be no. neat! Stop it's it! It's bugging me! Fine, you get over there! No, 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 no not here! No! No, that's why I saw it! That's why I saw it! It's crooked! Now you're over there! It's crooked! No god, it's crooked! Or okay. Just to annoy Let's me. Let's go. Motivation, reaction, unit. I'm just staring at that thing being crooked.